Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So I have a book review for you today. I wanted to talk about this book, The Last House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward. So I just finished this one a little while ago and I had to try to think of how I was going to explain this book to you guys without giving too much away or making it sound really super boring. But I'm gonna do the best that I can and hopefully you guys enjoy the review and you'll go pick up this book for yourself. So this book is one of those quiet horror stories and when I say that it's like it's not twisty and turny all along the way. There's nothing really overly exciting that's happening but having said that it is the most fantastic page turner. You can't wait to pick it up and keep reading because the story hooks you in and even though it is so quiet and just kind of meandering through everything that is happening it really hooks you in and this book is super super creepy so here we follow a man named ted and he lives in the last house on needless street that borders um really thick woods and he lives in the house with his daughter lauren and his cat olivia and as the chapters start going along, you're seeing things from different points of view. So you'll have chapters that is from Ted's point of view, you'll have chapters that's from Lauren's point of view, and even you'll have chapters from the cat's point of view. And I never thought I would ever read a book that would be from the point of view of a cat, but it is written so, so well. And as soon as I started getting into this, I was immediately reminded of Baby Teeth by Zoya Stage. And if you read Baby Teeth and you really enjoyed it, I think you're really gonna like this book as well because this writer kind of writes creepy in the same sort of way as was done in Baby Teeth. I found the writing styles were very similar and you just get entirely creeped out by the whole situation and by Ted and by what is happening in the story. So Ted is described as someone who is a little bit overweight and he has red hair and he has a beard. But as I was reading, all I could think of was the movie version of The Lovely Bones and how Stanley Tucci played that character. And if you saw The Lovely Bones, you were probably entirely creeped out by Stanley Tucci's character. And that's what happened to me when I was reading the character of Ted just entirely creepy but like a quiet creepiness and as the story started to develop and you were seeing things from a different point of view it just got creepier and creepier so it's really hard to explain what's going on in the story so i don't want to get too too much into the plot because i don't want to give anything away but it is ted basically going throughout his days but he is also remembering things that had happened in his past and like I said it's Lauren and Olivia going throughout their days as well and there is actually another part of the story which I don't want to get into here because I don't want to be blamed for giving anything away but there is a second part of the story that's coming from the point of view of someone else and when I say that when you read kind of what's going on in this dual timeline you've already got it made up in your head that you know what's going on and like it says in the synopsis, it says you think you've read this story before, but I promise you it's something completely new. So having said that, yes, a lot of it was brilliantly done. It was really, really good. Um, the big reveal though, I figured out quite early on in the book. And it was funny because I was having a discussion with a friend of mine over on Instagram who also finished this book and she said, yeah, it was kind of evident at, you know, pretty early on sort of what was going on. So even though I had one of the reveals kind of figured out pretty early on, there was so much more to the story. And like I said, I absolutely loved it. It was totally creepy. I couldn't wait to get back to it when I had to take a break and it's just one of those quiet horrors that just kind of comes out of nowhere and hits you square in the face. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a full five stars. This is one of my favorite books of the year but probably one of my favorite books of all time. I enjoyed this one just as much or maybe even a little bit more than Baby Teeth. So I really really hope you guys go out and pick this one up for yourself. It is blurred by Stephen King as well. It says I haven't read anything this exciting since Gone Girl and 
it's absolutely true. So again, that's The Last House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward. If you've read this book, please leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought of it. But until next time, stay spooky guys. Bye.